Yeah, good good afternoon everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to the live coverage of the playoffs of individual competition at the 13th World Sudoku Championship 2018 in Prague. Uh, we see that the guys in the room are more or less ready. To the left hand side, to the left hand side, we can see Thomas Snyder from USA who finished 10th and Kenendo 9th place, Sanjay Kwak 8th place and Tantan Dai who is let's say leading this group finished rank 7 and now they are choosing the puzzles that will be solved and will not be solved. Yeah. So, coded pairs will not be used, said Tan Pandai, and she chose irregular dots as the second of the three, three puzzles, three puzzles to be solved in this round. And Sanjay Kwak chose Renban to be solved as the first one. And he said that he don't want to solve classic Sudoku in this round. And now it's Ken Endo's turn to choose the last puzzle from the remaining two options. And okay, so I was mistaken at the first time. So Sudokuro will be solved as the second puzzle, and Irogura Dots will be the last uh, puzzle in this round. To recap the rules, we have four players, and we have 21 minutes. We have 21 minutes to solve three puzzles. These 21 minutes are applicable for Tantan Dai, because she was the best from this four players and she earned 4,250 points in the preliminary phase and only 110 points less uh, earned Thomas Snyder at 10th place. So we can see that the time differences will be, will be very small. It's just 1 minute and 20 seconds time difference uh, between the 7th rank and 10th rank. So I think this round will be really exciting. And the player who first finish correctly all three puzzles is advancing to the next round. Oh, and we care only about this result, who is the winner of this round. The Remaining three players will be ranked 8th, 9th and 10th place according to their results in the preliminary phase. So the question for this round is who will be the fastest on the three puzzles, who will advance to the next round of the playoffs. Yeah, and we can see that the round started already. Tantan Dai is uh, solving Renban uh, Sudoku. Hopefully the resolution will be better on some of the other tables. To see the grid. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, so now we can see just the table of Tantan Dai. We can see, I, I would say clearly, what's her progress in the puzzle. It's a Renban puzzle. The groups of shaded cells should contain digits uh, that are consecutive but in arbitrary order. It's a bit tricky ban because each group has eight cells. It means uh, that all numbers from one to eight or from two to nine uh, should be present. It was assigned by 50 points, meaning that in the individual competition it will be worth uh, 50 points. So everybody is solving now. And the numbers are according to the numbers of the players. So table number one is uh, Tan Tan Dai. Table number two is SJ Quack. Table number three is Ken Endo and table number four is Thomas Snyder. We can see that uh, Tantan Dai is using her time advantage at least a bit. Okay, it's less than two minutes. I expect the players to finish the puzzle in four to five minutes, so we shall see. Yeah, here the progress is significant. And when the puzzle is, is finished, it is passed to the judge who is sitting next to the player. He or she writes down the time of submission and has one full minute uh, to core mark the puzzle or more precisely uh, to see if it is correct solution. If it is a correct solution, he will give to the competitor the next puzzle after one minute. If it is wrong solution, he will give back this paper. Yeah, and also the second player, SJ Quack, is approaching the final phase of this puzzle. I, yeah, I was a bit afraid. If, if the screen is stuck or we are facing this unpleasant phase, so the cards turned a bit. And now the solu solution of Tantan Dine is submitted. And it took her approximately three minutes and a half. And we shall see if the solution is correct. In the meantime, So we can see the progress of Thomas Snyder. The top half of the puzzle is nearly finished. This is Ken Endo, also having a good progress. Okay, I think it's 10 or 15 seconds before the decision of the proctor. Yeah. Yeah, so we can see that the solution was correct, submitted at this time. And uh, Tantandai started her Sudokuro. And also Thomas Snyder submitted a solution of the first puzzle. So he is approximately one minute and 20 seconds behind, which is funny because that's exactly the time difference between him and Tantan Dai. 
So they were both fast, but of course, uh, Tantan Dai got more points in the preliminary rounds. Maybe let's see what is this Sudokuro puzzle about. It is a bigger one. Actually, originally this was the puzzle for the individual competition and vice versa. The puzzle you solved was originally prepared for the playoffs, but after the testing, when I saw the average time of the test solvers, I switched this. Uh, and this is, let's say, a bit harder puzzle, but we can see that some digits are appearing in a solution. Yeah. Okay, Thomas Snyder was also correct with his Renban and he's now working on the Sudokuro. And at the moment, it means that these two guys are most probably the favorites uh, for the spot in the next playoffs round. I am not sure, but maybe SJ Quack already gave up a bit, because as I mentioned before, we only take care about the winner of the round. Who will be winner of the round will advance to the next round, and all the other players, according to the rules, uh, will be ranked based on their points in preliminary rounds. Okay, this is the paper of Thomas Snyder. Not, not many big digits now. We can see that this progress is yeah, yeah, better. I think that we should be hap happy with this live coverage and not complain about the resolution that we uh, cannot really solve the puzzle. We should not ask too much. Yeah, I can see in the fifth row that she is missing very easy digit. If you sum the two uh, parts of the line that are assigned with a sum, then, then you can just easily calculate the number in the very left cell of the fifth row. So, and the same applies, same applies for the bottom column, most probably the two cells that are outside can be somehow calculated. Yeah. In the meantime, it seems that the both players on the table two and three submitted their solutions. Now they most probably looked up and see what is the current situation. We can see on Iri's computer that it is still 11 minutes remaining for the two puzzles, if talking about Thomas and Tantandai. Yeah, so... Yeah, so Thomas made some progress, but... I'm a bit surprised because I saw that he is really good in Kakuro puzzle. Okay, I think Tantan Dai is at the moment a clear favorite of this round. Okay, SJ Kakuro started the puzzle. and Kenendo as well. This is what I mentioned before, that if there are some groups of cells with a sum and one le leftover cell, you can easily calculate the number. Yeah, she is just checking if every cell is filled. 
and submitting her solution. Okay, so with 10 more minutes, she submitted her solution. It means that she will have nine minutes to solve the last puzzle if her solution is correct. If not, another twist is possible. Now I think it is good to wait for the decision, decision of the judge. Yeah, and that's the third puzzle. So, may, yeah, we can see now irregular dots. I'm not sure, but most probably this is the first time irregular dots are appearing at the World Sudoku Championship. Despite the fact that it is one of my favorites variations that I like to create and create it for the first time, I think, 10 years ago. And it appears a lot in the Czech competitions when I am the author. It is maybe some a bit strange brother of consecutive Sudoku and maybe Kropke. And what I like is that uh, this puzzle is usually possible to create with no given digits because the combination of sums, differences, and irregular Sudoku gives enough constraints. And we can see that Tantanda is really well prepared for this championship. She knows all the variations, but now we can see that she didn't write a correct number in the top row. Yeah, yeah, but she's correcting, I think, in a good way. Because in, in the third column, the differences marked by white circles are differences by three, so the neighbor to six should be three or nine. Actually, I'm not sure why nine is not possible, but if we root for Tantan, -tan, then most probably we are happy with her progress. Okay, let's see what's happening. Well, the guys are stuck with Sudokuro, so I think we can move back to Tantan -tan Dai. With six, with six more minutes to go. Okay. I think we can all imagine how nervous she can be. On the other hand, she's doing well. Yeah, let's wait one more minute. Yeah, we can see that also solutions of SJ Quack and Kenendo were submitted. On the other hand, most probably this will not influence the results of this round of the playoffs.
Okay. Unfortunately, she will not hear your applause, but it is well deserved. Tantan Dai is the winner of the first round of the playoffs. She was very consistent in her performance, made few mistakes that she was able to correct immediately, and she will proceed to the next round and will find fight with her teammate Leti Jan Ming, with Jakub Ondroušek and Jan, and Jan Mrozovsky for the place in the final finals. Uh, we agreed with Jiří that there will be at least five minutes break be between the two rounds, so I think you can also have a quick rest.
Okay. I just discussed with the guys in the upper room that really everything went so smoothly like we saw that. And I was assured that yes, that everything's okay. They agreed on a break that most probably will finish in one or two minutes. So it's a good time to start talking about the next round. We already know that Tang Tan Dai advanced to this round and she will start with approximately three minutes time difference to the leader of this round, who is two times world champion Jan Mrozowski. And there was a small gap of 50 points between him and Jakub Ondroušek. These two guys are fighting against each other for really a long time. Jan Rozovsky several times visited our Czech national championship in past. Jakub, I think, also several times visited the Polish Sudaku championship. And the guys fight in the world championships 2009, 10, and so on. Now. Now today they are fighting for the spot in the very finals to have a chance to get a medal from this World Sudoku Championship. Now it's Jan's turn to choose the puzzle and he would like to solve irregular Sudoku as number two in this round. We will have 28 minutes and four puzzles. And Jan Mrozowski don't like to solve sequences, I assume, I, as, I, as I understood from what Yiri is marking, marking here. And Jakub Ondroušek said he would like to solve skyscrapers arrows, sky, skyscrapers arrows puzzle from round number four. And he didn't want to bother with multiples of 13. He is fed up with the 13th World Sudoku Championship, maybe. Now it's Let Young's turn to choose a puzzle. And we will finish this round with consecutive Sudoku. And again, we will not see a classic Sudoku. That's a strange decision. I can remember a lot of arguing if something other than a classic Sudoku can appear at the World Sudoku Championship. And now the top players say they don't want to solve classic Sudoku. We will start with a killer, said Tantan Dai. And I assume that we will start soon. All the players and proctors are at their tables. And the man who should start is missing his pencil. Or maybe he is checking the rules of killer Sudoku. Yeah, he has to consult with Steve Wunk how to solve Killer Sudoku. Yeah, maybe it's a good time for quick remark on other topic. Individual round number 10 was marked and is ready for you to pick up. Now you can choose what is more interesting for you to see the guys in the playoffs or to see your individual round number 10. Of course, 
individual round number 10 will wait for you. And please, please be sure that also all possible protests concerning individual round number seven were placed because there will be a deadline for the protests concerning individual rounds at 19.00. Yeah, it seems that we are still waiting for the favorite pencil. Okay, sorry. It was not Jan, it was us. Yeah, sorry. It was not Jan, it was us. Of course, the guys chose from a eight puzzles the four they would like to solve, and the judges needed time to pick the papers in a correct order and so on. So the second round, the second round of the playoffs started. Jan is solving and in a few moments Jakub will follow. The third puzzle is a killer Sudoku. And I would say it is a regular one, maybe like in the second round, not these, let's say, fancy variations of killer that appeared in the killer style round. And now Jakub is also making his calculations. Yeah, this is Jan Mrozowski. And we can see that both of them started from the corners where it was possible to calculate some single cells as the leftover to 45. It is written 40 points in the top, so I assume that in three minutes these two guys who are really fast on mathematical variations should be able to finish the puzzle which is not good news for the two Chinese contestants who still are waiting for the start in the round. But it is based, it is based on the results of the preliminary phase. Jan Rozovsky had 4,490 points, 200 more than Letiang Ming which resulted in a difference of two and a half minutes. Okay, this is a close look to the work of Jan. And Jakub also has the bottom part of the puzzle and now is working in the top. And we can see that Letian Ming already started. And we have five, three, two, one, and start also for Tan Tan Dai. But I think that at this moment, not only the Czech and Polish fans are most interested in the tables number one and two. So this is again Jan. Yeah, I am checking the puzzle in a computer. There is a lot of cages with 20 and with 18. And this is the final stage what what to decide
Yeah, it's very similar and it seems that we will have a submission really in the same time. Maybe, yeah. The last few digits are for Jakub Ondroušek, so he has an advantage of approximately 10 seconds and we have three more puzzles to go. What is the next one? I forgot. I think it will be irregular. Yeah, we see it now. It will be irregular Sudoku, the choice of Jan Mrozovsky, so we will see if he will fight back on his favorite. Yeah, and the difference is nine seconds at the moment. Maybe let's check the progress. Yeah, yeah, Yiri, uh, the camera uh, man, many cameras man, is reading my mind, so we can see that also uh, Letian is making his progress as well as uh, Tantan Dai, but most probably they will have to wait for some uh, mistakes by Jan and Jakub. Yeah, Jakub and Jan already started their second puzzle. Let's check how it looks like. No, Jan Mrozovsky is correcting his solution of killer Sudoku and Jakub Ondroušek started irregular. Yeah, so some of the sums most probably don't work and yeah definitely it is not a pleasant option to erase everything because it means three or four minutes of work Yeah, maybe it is not very polite to look how Jan is suffering, so let's switch to somebody else. Yeah, this is irregular Sudoku with given digits forming letters W, S, C, but I'm pretty sure that Jakub doesn't care about the design of the puzzle. Most probably he will be happy with the progress. He is slowly but surely moving forward. Well, let's check the killers. Here is table number three and also some corrections. Table number four, most probably we have submitted. And Jan is still correcting, it means, yeah, Jan is correcting a lot, so let's check what's number four, Chuska. Yeah, Jakub is nearly finishing and Tantanda is starting her irregular. It means that at the moment we have a clear favorite in this round and the lady who is trying to be fast enough, yeah. This irregular puzzle disappeared from Jakub's table and is in hands of Jana. It means there is another submission period of one minute. Yeah. Here is the irregular Sudoku again, with less digits written by Tantan, we can more clearly see the given digits and their shape of WSC. 
but I think uh, we should uh, switch back uh, to uh, the overview or to the table of Jakub. Yeah, and it's the next puzzle. It's skyscrapers on arrows. The puzzle Jakub wanted to solve. It's questionable if this was choice by strategy to choose the puzzle with most points to get a better chance to overrun somebody. We can see that there are two longer arrows and four short ones where you can easily from start see what number will be in the circle. And now you have to place the other digits to follow the skyscrapers rules. It means that the topmost arrow, there should be three different digits in increasing sequence. In the bottom arrow, you have to hide the next two. Yeah, there is the longer arrow with five cells. It means that numbers two, three, and five are possible. Number two already is placed in the six box and also in the fourth row. So number three and five are possible. Yeah, maybe let's check all the tables. Okay, here are the corrections on Killer Sudoku. Doesn't doesn't look well for Jan. Here is Jakub and his skyscrapers on arrows. Here is still a Killer Sudoku in hands of Letian Ming. Doesn't look well for Letian Ming as well. And Tan Tan Dai submitted her irregular Sudoku. She's really fast. Yeah, I think I can confirm that the skyscrapers on arrows was the hardest puzzle from all the eight that were in the puzzle pool. So there still can interesting things happen. But I'm not sure if Jakub deduced somehow or tried number five in the fourth row to choose that there, there should be also an increasing sequence on the top long arrow. And he is progressing in this moment really fast. Let's, let's check the first moves on table four. Yeah. Now we can see Again, skyscrapers on arrows, but I cannot see clearly. Uh, here is the detail, so most probably, yeah, most probably Tantandai has also the easiest numbers in the beginning on her paper. But uh, on contrary, the grid is still very sparse. Most probably Jakub. Oh, he's still solving. Let's check what he is solving. Yeah, the last several numbers. Yeah, there is the last trick, let's say, in the bottom part, not to switch switch the digits. What happened to Jakub? Definitely with number four, where he is now erasing the ninth row, the number four is not enough to hide both, both digits. Mm behind it. Number five is better. Now the topmost arrow is working well. And with the two sevens on the other arrow, he also fulfills the rules. Well, let's see what's going on. Yeah, Let Yan Ming submitted his killer Sudoku. Let's check. Let's check how far is Tan Tan Dai. Yeah. Well, we are closing this round with 
40 points consecutive Sudoku. That should be an easy job for Jakub, but you know, in the playoffs of Sudoku Championship, that takes place once a year, there is a lot, a lot of psychical pressure. So I think that also Tantan Dai is not out of chances. Yeah, this is irregular Sudoku for Letian Ming. And we can see consecutive Sudoku with five given digits just to make it unique and with a lot of dots. Well, of course, it is necessary to find the right place where to start. To start with digit one is, I think, a good option. Let's check once again. Let's check, check once again these skyscrapers on arrows. We can see only very small numbers and yeah, most probably she tried to fill something quickly, but yeah, this is not visible for us, so let's follow Jakub and, and, and his consecutive Sudoku, because again, we only care in this round about the winner, who will be the fastest, will advance to the fight for the medals, and now at the moment, it seems that Jakub is really close. Yeah, I think he's checking the possible combinations in this eight box. Should be one long sequence and three other digits. Sometimes it is not easy to switch between these fast phases of solving and slower phases of solving. Yeah, so he moved forward. Yeah, so skyscraper sonero submitted. A good progress on irregular Sudoku. And here we have also skyscraper soneros. Well, we missed the whole puzzle for Jan. It means that he really chose well. Ir irregular Sudoku, he was really fast, but unfortunately I think that he will not have enough time to finish two puzzles earlier than Jakub his last half of a puzzle and maybe it is now less than half of a puzzle and in this type of puzzle you can write the last digits really fast yeah so one minute to go, maybe we can check what is doing Tantan Dai. She is also solving consecutive Sudoku and we can admire how fast she is solving. Unfortunately for her, she started with two minutes and 20 seconds later than Jakub. And despite the fact that she was also really fast, the difference in points in the preliminary phase was not favorable for her. Wow, this was really fast. Yeah, and the body language tells a lot at this moment. So, Jakub advancing for the finals. And I think this is 
with all the respect to other competitors, the best thing for this championship in Prague because we have three really great players in the finals and also a representative of the home nation. And all the four guys in the finals has a lot of medals from World Sudoku Championship. So this will be a really tough fight. I think we are going to proceed to the final round in five to ten minutes. I will ask upstairs if they are ready. Thank you for following us.
Yeah, hopefully I am not late. We should check the screen of Yiri because Kota Moridnishi is choosing the first puzzle and we will see arrows, the regular ones with sums in the finals, which will be interesting because there was that is a hard puzzle and I'm sad. I I have to admit I'm sad that I will not see in the finals maybe my most beloved variation of Sudoku clock faces, but I can understand the players who don't like it. Tidwunk would like to solve fortress in the finals and is not interested in Duodoku. Yeah. Bastien Vialjain would like the elimination puzzle to be solved. Yeah, most probably in the last one. I did use this that we don't see it on a screen. I believe that Yiri will move it. And we again will not see classic Sudoku. Interesting. The fourth puzzle will be thermometers. And we will not see X versus Sudoku. And again, Kota Morinishi, as the winner of the preliminary rounds, had an opportunity to choose the last choice from the two puzzles and again he went for the more interesting variation for odd even sum and he said that he don't like to see, see and solve Windoku. I would say that the choice of puzzles I think ensures us of a very twisty finals because all of these variations are not the classical ones these are very different. Something odd even, something from mathematics, something from other families of variations. So this will be really interesting. And the players also went for the puzzles with more points, but they are the best in the world. So I assume that they will be fast also on these. And I think we are ready to start. No, no, of course we are not ready to start because the judges at the back row has to select the puzzles and mark clearly for the judges what are them in the solution sheets and so on. I think it is good to give the time they need for a fair competition. Maybe I can recap what were the results of the pre preliminary phase. Kota Morinishi uh, finished with 4,960 points, just 40 points below the 5,000. And he will start and we'll have 35 minutes to solve the five puzzles. Tid Wung was 161 points after him, which transferred to an approximately two minute difference between the two guys. The two guys who fought a really great clash last year in Bangalore in India. There was no playoffs, so only the preliminary rounds decided. 
the title for Kota Morinishi, who was ahead by, I think, just three points of many thousands ahead of Piet Wung. Today, he has two minutes advantage. We shall see how significant it is. The round started and Kota Morinishi is solving puzzle with title odd even sums. We don't see it clearly, but I can tell you that all the cages are odd sums. It means that one odd and one even digit is in the cages. I'm not sure, but yeah, most probably the cages are not very visible. Okay, yeah, okay, we cannot go closer, but we can see that Kota already filled some cells and he is marking for him most probably the odd digits with small squares. And it's a 40 points puzzle. It means something between two and three minutes for the top players, I will expect. And Tit is going to start in a few seconds. And should not be distracted much by the fact that Kota is well ahead with the first puzzle. We will have five puzzles. Yeah, okay, a left-handed player. No problem for us. Okay, is Kota finishing or messing something up? I don't think so. So he will finish in a few seconds. It means that he will have the first puzzle ready in the time when Bastien and Jakub most probably didn't start yet. But the point difference was really big, so it's well-deserved advantage. Okay, the first submission. And Bastien is ready to start. Yes, here is Tiet Wung. And here is Bastien. And the odd even sum pseudo. In this round, not only the winner is important, but all the three medalists. So this will be really exciting till the end. Yeah, we can see the difference between the top two players in the world. One of them is right-handed, the other end is left-handed. One of them is circling around even digits, and the other one is putting squares into odd cells. And Kota Morinishi just now started the second puzzle, which is Fortress, Fortress Sudoku. We saw four crosses of gray cells. The rule says that if white cell and gray cell are sharing an edge, the number in gray cell should be higher. And there is, let's say, a small trick in this puzzle that the gray cell in the center of this cross has only gray neighbors. It means no rules applicable for this cell. Kota started with, with digits 9. It's a usual step in this variation. Yeah, so Tit is also advancing with the first puzzle, but to my eyes, he is not that fast with this variation. Bastien seems to be faster. 
because he has approximately the same amount of written digits despite the fact he started one minute later. Let's check if Kuba Ondroushek already started. No, but most probably this is close to start. Okay. Yeah, we know already that Kota is on the second puzzle. And Bastien is not happy. Maybe he was too fast. Yeah, so I think this is near to the final solution. Let's check table number one. Yeah. The Fortress Sudoku was assigned by virtual, virtual value of 70 points. So uh, it is a good sign uh, for the test solvers. Let's say that it seems to be a bit harder in hands of Kota Morinishi. Tietung submitted his first puzzle, so we will see him solve Fortress Sudoku in the near future, hopefully. I'm not a big fan of mistakes in the finals. Yeah, Bastian is correcting. It seems that he didn't have to erase whole grid, which also is good for him. And he is also finishing. So the difference between Tiet and Bastien is still approximately one minute. Kota is well ahead. Okay, Jakub also started and we see a fancy two color pencil in his hands. Maybe that's the difference between him and the champions. He needs two colors. <laughs> the guys at tables one and two needed only, let's say, one color, one side. But not important. Jakub is also progressing well and we still have a lot of time ahead of the competitors. Let's check number one if Kota Morinishi is getting close. Yeah, he is progressing. Yeah, so this is the solution of Bastian. He's still not happy with it. Ooh. It's, not, it's not clear to us where the mistake can be. I think let's check the other guys. Yeah, Jakub and his blue and red circles that are that are also making the situation for us less clear but he is progressing well it seems and the two top guys are fighting against the four trees there are few last cells and it is true that it's still not let's say given for free to the players there is something to be analyzed. Yeah, so maybe Bastien was just rechecking and now he submitted his puzzle. Kota Morinishi seems to be really close to the finish and where is the breakthrough? Yeah, we, we cannot see all their markings, so it's hard to analyze the small numbers. Yeah. 
Yeah, so Kota decided for one of the very uh, one of the combinations and most probably is finishing the puzzle. And ten minutes are away. Yeah, Kota is checking for the brain cells. It's good for him. And we see that with approximately 23 minutes for the last three puzzles, he will be still ahead in this race. Yeah, this is Teeth. So he is, let's say, close to the final phase in this puzzle. And maybe with more digits in the top part, he will finish all of them without much thinking. Yeah, so this is Jakub Ondroušek also fighting against the Fortress puzzle. And maybe check his check his opponent in the fight for the bronze medal, Bastien Vialgem. So the difference is not big, I will say. Yeah, so these are regular arrows. Maybe maybe the picture looks familiar to you. It's true that the positions of the arrows is the same as in the skyscrapers on arrows we saw previously. On the other hand, the given digits are different and the rules are different. The easiest part is what Kota did. There are clearly two nines in fourth and sixth row because you have to place numbers one, two, three in the third row and one, two in fourth row to sum up to the total of nine. So now he has all nines placed, but I know that there is still a lot of work to do. So, so let's switch to, to the next puzzles. And Tiet Wung is also starting Arrow's puzzle. It means that he was faster on Fortress than Kota, and he's, he's closing the gap. And here are the two guys who at the moment compete for the third place. They are both solving Fortress Sudoku. At the moment, it seems to me that Jakub is in a good mood and good form, taking into account that he won the playoffs of uh, World Puzzle Federation GP finals yesterday, and he was able to advance from the previous round. But, yeah, I think the progress in the two grids is really comparable, and we have three more puzzles to go. And only 21 minutes. So for the first two guys, Kota and Teet, it's now similar to the first round of the playoffs when again, when again it was 21 minutes and three puzzles. Okay few more numbers in the second box and we see some numbers below the grid I'm not sure if it is some combination to visualize it better I know already from past uh, when I was also for example a proctor during some playoffs and finals I know that Kota Moridishi is not writing many small digits in a cells. He prefers the bigger ones, which is on one hand side a good choice. On the other hand side, sometimes it is the combination of the small digits and combination of the candidates 
which moves you forward. Yeah. So teeth is also counting and yeah, we see more or less the similar similar picture. Okay, this is the detailed view of Kota's work and he advanced somehow in the bottom part with the total of eight on the bottom most cell. I'm not sure if it is correct, but if yes, good for him. Okay, and here is submitted fortress by Bastian Vialge. And the last few digits for Jakub. But somewhere he got lost. Okay. Yeah, but we can see that he is deleting only some of the cells where most probably he tried to choose one of the combinations, but definitely this is hard time for him now in the, in the contest for the bronze medal. Yes, Bastian is starting his arrows puzzle. And he, he has a clear advantage because the rank of the finalists is decided by the number of correctly solved puzzles, the time of last correct submissions. So now he is clearly ahead of Jakub. If Jakub wants a bronze medal, he has to be very fast on the second trial on the fortress, which we see that he is. But he also has to solve the whole arrows Sudoku faster than Bastian. We shall see. Let's go back to the fight for the title. And here we can see that Kota had to erase what he had in the bottom row. And I'm not sure if I remember this correctly, but this 90 points arrows was his choice. So it's all uh, his fault. Uh, let's see what Teeth is doing. Okay. It's the same puzzle and not many big digits. On the other hand, we can see clearly see that Teeth is also Let's say trying one of the possible combinations in small digits. Yeah, we still have 15 minutes to go. And the next two puzzles are thermometers and elimination. Both should be easier than this one. And I hope that the finalists will proceed to the last two puzzles. It will be better to have a winner by time, not just by the number of puzzles. Yeah, so all the four guys are now working on arrows when Kota had most or the longest chance to combine. Here is Teeth. Now is 
uh, less big digits. And I'm a bit surprised that he has different ones. If we switch once again, back to Yeah, so. Yeah, so we, we can see that the guys have different big numbers. So maybe both of them are approaching the correct solution, but from different directions, let's say. Yeah, this is Bastian. And this is Jakub. Yeah, this number two is popular. We can see the number two in a row in all four grids, so most probably this will be the correct one. Yeah, 13 minutes to go. Yeah, if I remember correctly, this 115 totaling in 7 is a correct combination, so maybe the twist is here. Because Teed has almost every digit on the digits on the arrows ready. And yeah, it seems that these two guys will go side by side to the last two puzzles. Yeah, this is Bastien with a lot of tools. This is Kuba with smaller number of occurrences of digit two, but yeah, I think let's let's move to table number one and two, which is the most in interesting at the moment. Yeah, so this was a bit longer period of nervous time, but now we will move forward, and it is Tid Wung who is ahead. Yeah, this is Bastian who is also finishing the puzzle. So we will have all three contestants not in big differences. Nice. And Kota rechecked and suddenly he is in a third place. We have 10 more minutes to go. I'm pretty sure that the contestants will be able to finish the next puzzle within these 10 minutes. So this will give us a clue. Yes, and Tit is starting these thermometers. He has advantage, of course. The player who wants to went back in front of Teed has to solve thermometers faster than him.
Yeah, let's check what is. Yeah, well, yeah, Jakub is still fighting with arrows. Maybe the other guys are more interesting now. Yes, Bastian started thermometers as well. And Kota as well. So the top three top three spots after preliminary phase are now solving thermometers Sudoku to give us a clue what will be the medal distribution. It was not easy for me to decide what will be the time for the finals because of course I didn't know which puzzles they will choose and they chose the harder ones. It means that maybe the time limit of 35 minutes will not be enough and in that case when the timer counts down to zero we will have to check the number of correctly solved puzzles and the time of last correct submission. Yeah, this is Bastian. Making a good progress in his thermometers. This is Teeth. And we can see less big digits. So maybe really another twist is ahead of us. This is Kota with the number of big digits comparable to Bastien. Yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah, so this is Kota with a lot of digits along the thermometers. So I think he's progressing well. But what about Bastien? Yeah, I think that's really comparable. So this may be a question of seconds on this submission. Because we have only six minutes to go, if they are able to finish the puzzle in the next 20 seconds, they will have only five minutes for the last puzzle. Yes, so most probably submission of this puzzle will decide about the world champion. Yeah. That was close. And this is the second submission. Most probably for the second place. Or in case of a really fast solving of elimination Sudoku. The chance to be for the first time a world champion. We shall see. Jakub and thermometers, well to say it honestly, this is not important anymore. <laughs> so let's switch. And Tidwung is also finishing his thermometers. So I would say the bronze medal is guaranteed and the final puzzle will decide. But the elimination was assigned by 70 points. The guys know. They know that with a logical solving pass, most probably they will not succeed. So let's see what they will do. And Kota Morinishi started and has few digits already. But these are, let's say, 
easy digits that are deducible from classic Sudoku rules. I assume that Bastien will also re really fast at these digits. There is one big twist in this puzzle. If you see all these arrows along the diagonal, and if you analyze the situation, it means that it's a diagonal Sudoku. I mean the diagonal from the left top corner to the bottom right corner. And if a player sees this early, I think he has a chance to finish the puzzle. If not, most probably he will struggle. Let's see. Yeah, this is Steve Wung, who also starts solving elimination Sudoku. Maybe it's a funny choice for the last puzzle of the individual competition. Call it elimination. This is Bastien. And we have three more minutes. Yeah, and we can see that none of the guys is really writing. It's great that they are thinking, but in three minutes, there is not much time for thinking, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, two more minutes to go and let's check what's the situation. This is Steed Wunk. This is Kota Morinishi. And this is Bastian. Yeah. I'm afraid that we see three nearly identical grids. It's not much of progress. And with one more minute to go, this puzzle will not be important. Yeah, well. 120 is a lot of time for these guys, but but this puzzle unfortunately is not a world record classic Sudoku. Yeah, the most important thing in this situation is the timer. Yeah. Okay. Jakub Ondroušek has his chance to write at least several digits into the last puzzle. And let's check what is Tid doing. Is he fighting back with 15 seconds? Yeah, he is, but unfortunately 15 seconds will not be enough for him. That's a pity. Oh my god. Yeah, this was really tense. And the winner, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> is Kota Morinishi who submitted First, the thermometers, silver medal for Bastien, submitting the thermometers as second, and bronze medal for Tid Wunk. Uh, let's wait. The guys, the guys will be 
guide it down. Let's wait for him. Yeah, that's it. Now we see it. Five minutes, 56 seconds before the end of timer. And if you don't understand what is Chasomira, it is, let's say, the countdown clock. And Konezri means game over. Yeah, and I was asked to announce that after we give a great applause for the finalists, then after approximately 10 minutes, there will be the second round of qualification for this world record competition. I don't know more. Yeah, few more.